When you watch a movie, you are doing one very specific and odd thing. You are looking at a bunch of people saying and doing stuff. I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. A story comes out of that somehow, and you love it. Shit just got real. But before you can spend your hard-earned cash buying a computer to illegally download a movie, an industrious fellow called the director must tell lectors to sit, stand, and move in certain ways so they can be shot. By the camera. And there are only two ways that actors can be arranged, in 2D and 3D, which have nothing to do with those 2D and 3D. The movie screen has three areas, foreground, middle ground, and background. If the director makes his actors take up only one of these grounds, then the image can be called bidimensional. That's 2D directing. During the 1930s, the first decade of sound film, this arrangement of actors was the most common. That's, that's what they call a sanity clause. <laughs> you can't fool me, there ain't no sanity clause. Most scenes had the players arrayed in what is called the clothesline. You place all actors on the same horizontal line, preferably with their torsos facing the camera so you can see their overpaid bodies better. Well, can't you tell us anything about the case? Yes, it's putting me way behind in my drinking. The wider the aspect ratio and the larger the number of actors, the more unnatural this positioning feels, and the more liable it is to look like the Last Supper. The clothesline, however, survived until this day thanks to how useful it is to show two actors talking to each other. It might be hard to memorize, but these shots of two people talking are what is called the two-shot. And the two-shot can be used for basically anything. Everything. It's great for love scenes. It's also great for confrontation scenes. Sometimes there's no need to come up with anything extravagant. The good old reliable two-shot will do. And the clothesline is more than fine to give everyone equality. But if you're a capitalist pig, and you don't want the group of actors to be treated in the same way, if you don't want the actors to look like they're hanging on a cord, then you, my friend, are in dire need of the third, third dimension. dimension. We have stepped into a new dimension. In the 1930s, the films of great directors William Wyler, Jean Renoir, and John Ford popularized a certain style. That style was brought to stratospheric heights by Orson Welles in the early 40s, and suddenly filmmakers fell in love with 3D directing. <laughs> Actually, arranging actors in layers was already common in the 1910s. Yes, the 1910s. But it took some 30 years before the mainstream caught on and said, hey, that's pretty cool. The use of depth provides far more possibilities for directors. Brother Morgs again. Now actors can be placed any distance away from the camera and each other. They can move in whichever way you'd like. Depending on their positions, you can make one character dwarf another. Depth makes the world of the film feel bigger and the visual relation between characters look more complex. It can give the impression you are looking at two or more shots merged into one. For example, depth is a friend of jealousy. In this shot from Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, Richard Burton watches from the back as his wife flirts with another man. Martha, your obscenity is beyond <laughs> George here doesn't cotton too much to body talk. And Paunchy here uh, isn't too happy when the conversation moves to muscle. How much do you want? Now check this shot from The Private Affairs of Bella Me by Albert Lewin, one of the greatest directors you've never heard of. George Sanders is in the foreground watching as his wife talks to another man in the background. You're not listening to me at all. Your thoughts are miles away. No, not miles away, just some 30 feet. It all shows how great depth is to give you a character's perspective. That's why the most popular use of depth is when the camera is placed over a character's shoulder to show you what he's seeing. I hate to get too technical with names, but this type of over-the-shoulder shot is called... 
The over the shoulder shot. It's basically the two shot of depth. Just because 3D directing is more complex, it doesn't mean it's always better. See here what an amazing bidimensional composition Kurosawa makes in Ren. The characters in clothesline and the flat background in it still beautiful and painterly. It will always come down to the story and how creative is the director. The mentions are just tools. Congratulations, Tom. I hear you swallowed your own load. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Stupid army, searching for me with that giant helicopter in the distance. <gasps> it's not giant and it's not in the distance! 